Freaky Friends. This is Colleen. And this is Margaret. And And we're we're the the Cousins Cousins Weird. Weird. It's after Halloween. It is. We're in November. And I'm like, my brain still thinks it's September. I feel like... Where did October go? I don't even feel like Halloween happened. I know. We were together on Halloween, yet I don't feel like we had Halloween. And it's like, we zapped through, we zipped through October so fast, it's like... My brain is like behind. Yeah, we we haven't. We're not in October yet. We're still in September. No, we're, we're actually in November, November, Margaret. Yeah, it's crazy. Jesus. I I'm just yeah. When did November happen? But anyway, we're in November. Halloween is come and gone. I'll survive. It snowed the other day. It made me so excited. I know that was magical. I love the it. day it's after. Beautiful. The day after Halloween, it snowed, and I was like, you know what? That night it was snowing. It's like welcome winter. Here we are. November 1st, snow! Samhain happened, the end, the last harvest festival. And then we got the Welcome snow. Welcome winter, the dark half of the and year. And it actually snowed yesterday at my house. It snowed here too. It snowed here oh, too. And then it all melted, and that was sad. Yeah. It's really pretty right now, though, with the like the leaves. when the, If the snow comes down and the leaves are still kind of... I don't know why. There's something magical like a, about there it. There really is. I love it. Good, like it's the really first pretty. snow. Especially if it's still fall when it snows. Yeah. Just, I love it. So, did you guys listen to our... Live recording at the Haunted Tap Hour. If you haven't, you should pause this, go listen to that, then come back to this because, yeah, that was a good one. It was. It was fun. We had a great time. It was a lot of fun. A lot of really cool people were there. Yes, it and was. told their stories, it was and great. the room was full of old Victorian stuff. And normally to talk to Colleen about this kind of thing, like not in the episode, but that's my idea for having our listener tales. Is to not just read stories that other people send to us. Have them I think that them. we should have, we should invite people to record with us. For like a, a Have tale. a listener tale episode and do that'd it quarterly fun. and like have, like invite people like, we want your tales, come on our podcast with us. Yeah, that's be fun. Like nobody else does that. And that's, it was fun to interact with people and like to just be there and listen to them right. tell it. Like in their words, like the way they told it had more, I don't know, it just felt like, if I read it, it's not going to feel, you won't feel the emotions as if someone that experienced those things, you know, right. did. So, makes sense to have them tell their story. And, like, they can tell the jokes better than we can. You know what I mean? Like, right. the parts that are funny, to, like, yeah. they can, they were there. And how people explain things and they explain their house. And it's like, I don't know. I like, I like talking with people about right. it. It's, it's it was fun. fun. That was a good time. We had a really fun time that night. and. Um, I got to see hair jewelry up close and hair art up close, which was fascinating to me. I'm not into that. Margaret did not like it, but mm-hmm. I was like all about it. It was so cool. Art made from I would told, I If hair. I could get my hand on jewelry, like a necklace, I would totally wear that shit. I don't know. I would wear it. It'd be haunted as hell. It would be. And I love it. Like those dolls, like the old dolls. Breathing made dolls. With with the, made with oh, the yeah, hair. with the hair. Oh, nope, I don't want that. No thanks. See, I don't know. I don't like that. But I'm okay with the other. Isn't that weird? I don't know why. It's because it's like accessories. I do like accessory. I it's do like a good accessory. because on the doll, it's the doll's hair. Yeah. I, I, I like a good accessory. You, you, it's because it's an accessory. I'm about the earrings and the necklaces and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, It makes didn't sense. look like hair. It looked like weird feathers or something. Well, it was what was, the hair was what was holding it together. So it wasn't like all the colored pieces weren't the hair. It was what the hair was what was like the thread of it. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah. Fascinating. Victorian mm. era was m- just bizarre. Well, that's also when crazy. they, when the end of the Victorian era is when they would sew people's own hair into their eyelids to make yeah. their eyelashes look longer. Please don't do that. Not into your eyelids. No. That's not good that's, for nobody. That's not That's not, not so things near our eyeballs. It's not a good idea. No. My kids got 20 pounds of candy each. I gave them about five of those pounds. I know. Myself. I'm like, oh my God. I, I was go, like handfulling it If into we their bought bags. this at the grocery store, we'd have spent $30. I know. I spent <laughs> so much money on candy. I do every year. I spend a lot of money on it because I get a lot, I get a good amount of trick or treaters. But I, when I'm done, I'm done. So Evie and Ruby came to the house and I was like, I'm done. Here you go. I'm like, don't give them all I was that. Like, I was like, hey, two fisting. Into their bags. And Margaret's like, stop! They have enough! <laughs> but, well, they needed it. They didn't. They, they really did. didn't. Now all they're doing is fighting over it now. You know what I saw someone do? Is they took, like, got bought those little snack bags and, like, divvied out the candy in it. And every day they can have one snack bag. And I'm like, oh, that's a good that idea. That is an amazing idea. I need to do that. Yeah. I was like, that's a good idea. Because you they get to pick a snack bag out of the thing and then have their snack bag. 
and then you put them away, and that's what they had for the day. That is great. Yeah, like like you know, even if it's even if it's five pieces. They might have pieces. eaten. I haven't even seen the candy. Oh God, it's gone. It's like half gone. I'm sure. If it's not gone now, it probably will be over the weekend. They're going to be so sick. That's probably why Evie was sick. It probably was, and they probably get grumpy too because they start to crash from that. Oh, sugar they're wicked, high. wicked. Like tonight, oh, yeah. Evie threw away the Twizzlers. Wait, why? She was like, they were. Evie's like, I tried them and didn't like them, so I threw them out. She was like, they were my candy. I can do that. And I'm like, oh my God. And then Ruby's crying and she did it. Yes. She's, she's like, I want to eat them. I know. She loves Swizzlers. And um, and Evie doesn't. So the fact that she's like, well, I'm going to try them. It's, she's like, well, she wasn't sharing her tablet with me. Oh, boy. You have your own damn tablet, kid. Go find they're it. Ju- they're just... Uh, it's because they've eaten. Spiteful to they've, each other because they... eating too much candy. Eating too much candy, which will cause crashes emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, the, as a teacher, um, in any teacher, like my years of teaching, and I'm not in the classroom anymore, but I work with a lot of teachers still to this day. And the day after Halloween is the worst day to be a teacher because they're all coming in with a Halloween hangover and it's awful. And I do not think that we should change Halloween. However, I think that trick or treat night should always be a Saturday night. <laughs> Give those I, kids a day to, to yeah. recoup from their hangover. Or Friday night. Yeah. Not even then, because then people had to rush around after work. Do a Saturday. Most people have... Trick-or-treat night should be Saturday. Saturday night. Like like how Thanksgiving's always on yes, a Thursday. Yes, just let them have a, the Saturday closest to Halloween, whatever it is. Who cares? And some towns, some communities do that. Like they say, this is a trick-or-treat night, and they'll do it on a weekend, which makes sense. Yeah, but then the kids, like, because the parents are, they're like, oh, we're going to go over here because they have Halloween on Halloween. So they end up trick-or-treating twice. That's true. Just like Copenhagen does trunk, we did trunk or treat at trunk school, or treat, yeah. and that's supposed to be in place of trick or treat. And they do both. Yes. And there's like 25 trunk or treats in Jefferson County. And the kids went to that, and then we went trick or treating too. Right. It's like, I'm an idiot. We should just done trunk or treat and then yeah. be done. And it's like, this is our trick or treating. So like doing it twice. Yeah. But they really liked it. Yeah. Even though we froze. But that's okay. But it's fun. I love Halloween. I love giving out candy. I love trick-or-treating. I love the kids. I love talking to the kids and seeing their costumes and giving them chocolate. And I just love it. It's my favorite thing. But it was cold. And rushing after work to get home to have everything ready is a pain in the ass. So if it was on a Saturday, it'd be real nice. Like, this was the... Because I went on your block with the kids. And then, because Ruben was off and my ankle was hurting because of the cold. And he's like, why don't you go sit with Colleen and I'll I'll walk around with the, gir- the, the girls. I'm like, all right. Which I, it's like I, I knew my ankle hurt, but I still wanted to because I always do. And like the only other time I have never went trick or treating with the kids was Jackson was two weeks old, so we didn't, mm-hmm. obviously we went we went to my mom's house. And the year that Evie was born, because she was only five days old, right? Um, and Jackson took the kids then, he took right? Jackson, right? And, um, that was, but it was just like, it's weird, yeah. Like to not like walk around with them. I did a little bit, so it wasn't as weird, but. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had a kid to walk around with in a long time, so yeah, I'm used here. to giving out candy. Yeah. That's my favorite thing to do. I love it. I love giving out candy. I love seeing all the different costumes. I don't care if you're five days old and your parents the one getting the candy. They deserve it. Give them the candy. I don't care if you're 18. Trick or treating. I don't care if you're 85. Trick or treating. I'm going to give you candy. I'm going to be happy, happy to I give you candy. I feel the same way. Like, I love seeing older kids out trick or treating. Uh, it's it's like fun. You know, they could be hold doing something on. else. Yeah, but the thing is, hold on to that joy as long as you right. can. Yeah. Let them hold on to that joy. Let them do it. I don't, I never understood why people get mad. There were, I had two adults, like grown people, with trick or treat bags that I gave candy to, and I was perfectly fine doing it because I was like, you're having fun. Who cares? I have a ton of candy. Right. Like, go have fun. That's, That's fun. for the kids. I don't care who. It's for everybody. It's Anybody for who that wants up, to dress up and walk around, and they were dressed I will give up. candy. And I don't even care if you have a costume on. You come up to my house, and you have, and you're like, trick or treat. You don't even have to say trick or treat. You just come over. And be say nice. Hi. I'll give you candy. <laughs> if I had little bottles of liquor and you wanted that, I'd give you that too. I have a candy jar in my, um... In my treatment room at work, and I say it's it's free for all. Like I tell everybody, help yourselves. And um, one of my coworkers is like, Margaret, I'm in there. Like she's like, last week I was in there every day to get your um, 
She's like, you don't have very many Hershey Kisses left in that thing. You should just take your kids half their Halloween candy and just shove it in that <laughs> and refill it. And well, I like, because I like to get, like, fancy candy. Right now it's oh. full of Werther's, the okay. chewy caramels and the hard ones, and they're like the sp- pumpkin spice ones. And then I'll get, like, the seasonal, like, Hershey Something, Kisses. Yeah. Or I like Dove Dark, like, but that's probably why there's no Dove Dark in there. Because you eat it all. I don't want to eat it. Oh, because so. that's what, okay. I thought you I, might, you ate it all. That's no, why it's on I there. would have, but. Right. Um, like I don't really care for Hershey Kisses, so that's why they're Hershey Kisses. In there, there you go. There you go. And caramels aren't my favorite either. So. Well, are you ready? I'm ready. So today we're going to talk about the Ancient Ram Inn. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Ancient Ram Inn? I have not. Well, you're going to learn something. Ramen. Ram Inn. I know. Inn. Not ramen. It's going to ramen gonna have in some, there. We're not going to have some ramen noodles. <laughs> ramen. Or ram it in. No. Raymond noodles. Raymond. Um, <laughs> isn't that what Josh used to call his little Raymond noodles? I think he did. He did. Yeah. He was like, I need those Ray. I like those Raymond noodles. Yeah. Like the what? <laughs> Raymond noodles. Um, this the the ancient Ram Inn is is, is earned the reputation of the most haunted inn in Britain. Ooh, the most haunted thing, really. Um, it is in the it's the oldest building in the Wanton Under Edge, which is a small village forty minutes from Bristol. Okay. So there's this little, little inn, and it, wait till you find out when it was built, you're going to fall out of this, your chair. Ready? It was built in 1145. What? And it's still there. That's yeah. awesome. As a living quarters. That's haunted. Yeah, right? Holy Just shit. It's that long. It was a living quarters for masons and slaves that were building the nearby St. Mary's Church, which was built the same year. So that's still standing, too, because a lot of churches were built a long time ago, and they just last forever. After it was no longer needed for the Masons, it housed some priests for a while, and it had many different owners and different functions. It actually had 115 different owners, but it's been around since 1145, so that makes sense why there was 115 different owners for it. But that's it? Yeah, I know. It doesn't... Yeah. There should be more than that. Yeah. Like, that's all that are known. Yeah. The original people probably... There's probably been quite a few in between that people don't know about. Yes. John Humphreys bought the property in 1968. He actually saved it from being demolished. He 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 dedicated his life to actually preserving the inn. He bought it for 2,600 pounds. That was it. Wow. It's a paranormal hot spot. One of the reasons why is that where it's built, like the spot it was built on, is located on a crossroads for, of two ley lines. Have you ever heard of that before? Ley lines? I never heard of ley lines before. Yeah. I didn't know it was a thing. So that's like a line that you can draw from like connecting two geological or spiritual places of importance. A lot of the hinges, like the stone circles, a lot of them were built on ley lines. And they specifically do that. um, And actually the ley lines that go underneath the ram, one goes right to Stonehenge, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And then the other one is to the Glastonbury Tor, which is a, a tor is a freestanding rock, like, out shoot on a hill. Like, it's another, it's abruptly mm-hmm. slopes up, goes upward on, like, a, a rounded hill. So, on top of the Glastonbury one is a roofless tower of St. Michael, which is actually part, something to do with Celtic mythology. So... These ley lines are like energy tracks, is what people say. Yeah. Like yeah. Tracks energy. So people believe that en- the energy from Stonehenge feeds into the paranormal activity that maybe happens in the ancient ram, which could be kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and it was built on a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. Okay. So not only does it have the ley lines that go right to Stonehenge and this, this old tower in Celtic mythology. Mm-hmm. It also is on a 5,000-year-old pagan burial ground. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff happening yeah. in this yeah. area. When they were building the church, streams on the inn's ground had to be diverted around the church site. And it is said that when that happened, it opened up a portal of dark energy also. So you got pagan burial grounds, you got ley lines to Stonehenge, and now you also have a portal of dark energy because they diverted it. This water. It sounds like something from Supernatural. Right? It does. It sounds like an episode should be... Yeah. Like it should be on there, yeah. Poor, poor dark energy. So when John Humphreys purchased the inn, he moved right in with his wife and three daughters. The paranormal activity didn't scare him at all. He 
that didn't bother him. But his wife and daughters were like, nope, and they left. They wouldn't stay there. Oh, um, I'm pretty sure it like hurt, like he like lost his wife. His wife left him, and he didn't have a very good relationship with his daughters for many years because he chose basically chose the inn over them. And that sucks. Yeah, that sucks for him. So his first so there's family. But well, I mean, I mean, it sucks for, yeah, I mean, it sucks for him because he lost that relationship with his children. Right. Like, you made that stupid choice, sir. Yeah. Like, you know, his loss, really, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. His first night staying in the house, he said he was pulled from his bed by his arm by an unseen force and something kept banging on the window. Yeah, I don't blame his family for not wanting to stay there. No, it's I just the first night. I don't want to stay there either. No. There was an unnerving discovery in 1997 when they were tearing up parts of the concrete floor in the inn. Um, they found remains of a woman and a woman and children buried with an iron dagger. The Bristol Museum said, like, kind of studied the the remains and said that they believe that it was a ritual sacrifice. Nice done there, and they feel they haven't disturbed the rest of the floor, f- figuring that there's a lot of graves underneath that floor. And then we're going to leave them buried there. So. Yeah. That kind of, like, solidified the fact that this probably was some kind of burial ground. Mm-hmm. And the age of it, they kind of were able to, like, there was rumor that it was, but this kind of solidified that rumor that, yeah. Um, in this area where they found the grave, to this day, I think it's called, it's in, like, the kitchen area of the house. He has it dug up to look like a grave. What does he have it? In the house where they tore up the the floor. He never put the concrete back down, and he has it look. He has a stone tombstone, and it have it dug up to okay. look like a grave to this day. Okay. Like in the house, looks like a grave. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know either. I was like, it's, at first, I was like, that's cool, but then I'll like, oh, that's creepy <laughs> and dirty and yeah. worms. There's worms in the dirt, yeah. And snakes. Yeah, I mean, this is and moles, uh, all sorts of things. Yeah. And I don't know if there's a hole in the ground or if he has dirt on top of something. I don't know. But it looks like a grave. It looks like a freshly dug grave. No, I don't and like it's that. it's inside his house. I don't think that's a good idea. No. Dark shadow figures appear here often in this area, which, yeah. Go figure. Dead remains of children and women. And often they'll hear children crying in that area. Oh, yay. Now, several entities haunt this inn. And the most famous is a witch who was burned at the stake in the 1500s, which was with the height of the witch trials. It was like during that time where, you know, she, apparently the story goes that she was trying, they, she knew that they were wanted her. So she took off and she took refuge in the inn, like on her travels to get away. And they actually found her there. So her spirit is kind of locked into this building. Um, and she, the room <coughs> that she hid in is called the witch's room, which, you know, real creative. Yeah. She was burnt to the stake, and this room is located on the first floor of the of the inn. She can be seen peering from the bedroom window from the street below. People say when they're walking by, they can see her. Her spirit is joined by a black cat that haunts the room. They don't know if it's her familiar, but they did see... Did He did find a old cat mummified in the walls when he was refurbishing the place. So we don't know if it was her cat, but they think it might have been her cat. Right. I don't know. And apparently a couple of children were murdered there. No big oh, deal. And nice. they are seen in this room also with her. So she's not a, um, she isn't anything like aggressive or scary. She's just a presence in the house. She's not anything to be really scared of. Ghost hunters have photographed strange lights, orbs, and shadows in that room. So it's definitely a hot spot in the house. Okay. The worst room though is the bishop's room. Remember I said that it after the Masons moved out, then it was House of Priests. Well, there was a room that bishops would stay, specifically just bishops could stay in. Um, and they say that it's haunted by, this room now is haunted by nine entities. Several of them are bishops. There's a dark monk. And a Roman centurion has been seen on a horseback riding through the walls. Like, can, walks through and goes out the other side. It was probably in the graveyard. Yeah. The burial ground. The entities... In this room, people go in, they say it's oppressive, it's awful, there's definitely evil in this room. The bed has been said to levitate on its own. There's This is terrible. I almost puked just saying this. I don't know why this, I would not stay in this room. A spirit of a young woman appears on the ceiling, hanging upside down by her legs from the rafters. Can you imagine waking up 
and looking up, and there's this gross person hanging <laughs> from the ceiling. Like, I can't even stand it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I got the goosebumps. I hate it. I hate it. I hate everything about this place. Terrible. Why would you want to live here? He loves it. <laughs> Wait till you find out more, Margaret. Oh, no. A medium once entered that room, and when she pushed open the door, she was lifted off the ground and threw across the room. The atmosphere was described as oppressive and disturbing. Now, John Humphreys once used this room as his bedroom. <laughs> and why he chose to stay here, I don't know. He said, a succubus and an incubus, which we know. Yeah. They're like sex demons, right? Yeah. Would visit him at night. That's why he stayed And there. he was raped several times by them. What? Move! <laughs> no, no. We can't do that. We gotta preserve it, Margaret. Move out of that room, at least. People who have stayed at the inn, like, they, he had to end, eventually not have it as an inn because it wasn't safe to have people there. And part of the reason why he said was because the incubus and succubus. People will run out screaming for a room. They've even been seen jumping out the window to get out of that room. Like, it's bad. Like, no one wants to be in that room. Why was he in there? <laughs> Don't understand. And he had a love affair with the succubus, I guess. I don't know. Well, if they raped him, then it wasn't consensual. Maybe he, it wasn't really rape. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I know. <laughs> you don't want to blame the victim, but. So in one of the interviews. If it's a haunted thing yeah. and you're in the room that causes that, I think you're in the room because you want that. Yeah. So he was getting interviewed in this one article. I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> And he sits, he takes him to the room, this room, and he's sitting on the bed, and there's there's this guy interviewing, and there's a girl touring with him, sitting next on the bed, too. <laughs> he says, like, all casually, yep, this is where I was raped at least four times. He's patting the bed, and the girl just gets up and walks away. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> but he's just, like, he's, like, tapping it, like... I think like he's fondly thinking of it, right? It's, like, that's weird. That's not, that's not healthy. <laughs> it's, it's messed up. It's messed up. That, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Like, I, I have no words. <laughs> this, I the bed. I, this is where I was raped at least four times. I'm not. I mean, that was just that bad. Okay. I'm not laughing because the guy was raped. It's more like. <laughs> the way I, it's I don't been under, presented. Yes. Like and um, then he stayed there for fifty years. I with the, the raping succubus. <laughs> I think he was in that room because he—that's what his main goal was. I mean, his wife left him, and his kids left him. I and wouldn't he stay chose, there. I know, and he with chose raping and, demons. And, I know, and but he chose to stay there over his family. Obviously, they were giving him something he wanted. Jeez. Yeah. So. <laughs> The attic is also haunted. Of course it is. Uh, it's said that the daughter of the former innkeeper was murdered there and hung in the attic. You can hear dragging noises across the floor of something heavy. So, like, possibly it was her body being thrown. It was drawn. a body, probably. Yeah. Shadow figures are seen here. They hear knocking coming from the roof. Orbs, again, have been a photograph. Ghost hunters have captured. One of the ghost hunting groups that have been there actually took a picture at the, the stairway of the attic. Of a mist, this the height. It's like a shape of a human body, but it was a strange mist. Mm-hmm. Um, people have been pushed down the stairs by unseen forces um, going up to the attic. So the attic, every every bit of this house has something going on. And it's funny because every bit of the house has a specific haunting. It's not like it's they go move around. They're in those specific spots. Um, the barn on the pro- property is haunted by a seven-foot-tall dark figure. He's violent to men. He doesn't like men. But he said he likes blondes, and he's been known to touch their boobs and bums. Oh, God. So there's a bunch of rapey, <laughs> handsy, handsy, handsy ghosts in this <laughs> goddamn place. Why are you there? I don't know. I said, I say a big fat no. Never, ever, ever. Don't no stay things. at the ancient Ram Inn. You'll get rammed in. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You know, okay, I am not a victim blamer. No. But if you were told this ahead of time, <laughs> and then you go, and you're like, well, I'm going to lay, I'm going to go sleep in this room. I'm going to sleep in the bishop's documents. room for the documents. Something happens to you. Do you, can you really <laughs> blame anyone but yourself? I mean, at that point. 
Now the barn, the seven foot figure will stand at the door guarding it. Like he's protecting something. I'm like, if I walk up to the barn and there's a seven foot tall dark shadow figure standing in the door, I'm turning around and walking <laughs> in the way. He's not going to get handsy with me because I wouldn't have approached him. No. But whatever. I'm not a blonde either, so I'm safe. You're you know, not he a likes, blonde. He don't know that. He, he don't know that. Nobody, and I don't think not that, many people know that. No. I don't think I am Colleen's anymore. a natural blonde. I'm naturally gray now. But I don't <laughs> <think> I, <laughs> uh. So night after night, John Humphrey was haunted. And raped. And raped. <laughs> and he stayed there for 50 years, living in that house, in caring the- for that house, giving tours to people who wanted to see it. And the pictures, and this, this guy was a friggin' hoarder of things. But not like, it wasn't like just garbage. He had just like all these antiques and things that he had it just perfect in rooms, things set up just perfect, but just a lot of stuff. And the pictures are like fascinating to see. It's so old though. The fact that it's been around since 1145, that's blows my mind. I think of the grime built up on those walls from, well, from being centuries, centuries, <laughs> centuries yeah, of wood smoke and filth and just unwashed and succubus, people and succubus. succubus. Raping? <laughs> no, he's under- gonna have succubus jizz everywhere. <laughs> oh wait, is succubus the male one or the female one? Or the incubus? I don't. I don't one know. of them's which? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that grime's in there too. What? That grime is in there. <laughs> it's in there. It's rammed in there in the rancid. It's rammed in rancid. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. This okay, is, this is an excellent topic. Colleen. Yeah, I call, I, I was looking for like haunted places. I was like, "What's this one?" And I started reading. I go, "Oh yeah, yeah, this is straight up our alley." I like this. This is amazing. So he passed away in 2017, and at some point, I guess he reconciled his relationship with his child, or he just his daughter Caroline now is the owner. She doesn't live there, <laughs> she, but she maintains it. She invites archaeologists. Archaeologists. Archeo- say it, Margaret. Archaeological studies to happen there. Okay. Because it's so old and the, the grounds are so old and there's so much history there that obviously people are yeah. interested in it. It's empty now. No one lives in it. Well, that's probably um, smart. And it's closed as an inn. She doesn't rent it out as an inn, but she the does groping, allow... Raping, 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 raping. The demons <laughs> are there. You don't need to be staying the night. No. However, ghost hunts can be scheduled to be done there from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. You could be in the, there. For a ghost hunt through this company called Haunted Happenings, and she allows them to set up ghost hunts. They have equipment; you can go in, you can stay there until three a.m. Don't go in the bishop's room alone. No, or near the seven foot. So don't handsy rapey demons. There's lots of them, so go at your own risk. <laughs> she doesn't stay there because she's not stupid. She did say at one point that first they lived in a caravan outside of it, but their father would sleep in in the inn every night. While they slept in the caravan. Can you like those succubus? And I'm like, you gotta like it a little bit. If you're staying in there and you have options to stay elsewhere. Right. Like, <laughs> he's very eccentric. People said, like, some people said that the scariest part of the Ramson was him. <laughs> 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 he was like, there's a picture of him. He's just crazy a little old man. And. Like, the guy said, like, at first he's like, I think this guy's a con artist. He's spreading these rumors and stuff. But then when he went there and met him and, like, was experienced the house, he's like, no. No. No, nope, I think this is real. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely crazy guy. But I don't think he's a con artist. He's not kind of nobody. He's a little odd. He's just a little weird. Um, oh. So, like I said, you could, you could go there and stay if you want. <laughs> If you want to get raped. I really don't want. <laughs> ghost hunters have gone there. I mean, it's been on um, uh, Great British Ghosts, Most Haunted, and Ghost Adventures. Obviously, I mean, obviously they're there first. Signed up. Ghost oh, yeah. Adventures. I'm like, bring us to the rapey demon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can antagonize the succubus. Let's piss them off. Because that's what they like to do. They have to go listen and piss off the ghosts that are in it. So it's been on all those shows. It's it's a definitely a paranormal hotspot. And, like, there's other places in that county that kind of have hauntings in it, too. And it's not a big place. But you have to expect something to be there if it's been there from 1145, right? Like, there's... And the fact that there, it's on the ley lines to Stonehenge. And it's a burial ground. Like, all that stuff. Yeah. Obviously, something's happening there. 
For sure. But that's the story of the ancient Rams Inn. Get rammed. That could be their tagline. Get, Get rammed, rammed in the Rams Inn. <laughs> their marketing person i would i'm contacting caroline humphreys I'm, listen listen sister i got a whole idea for you let's really market this get really, rid really grasp onto that succubus incubus part you get this lots of incels out there probably yeah. love it Stay i know there. right yeah get yeah. rammed in the <laughs> Looking for a fun night? <laughs> it's it's wild. <laughs> Get wild. Get rammed. It's oh terrible. God! So anyway, that's the Rams End. I was like, I have to do this. Once I started reading about it, uh, I, I you have to w- make sure you look look for the pictures because it really is really cool looking inside. Um, the grave is creepy as whatever, and. Like, it's kept the way her father kept it. Like, he brought a lot of antiques into that place. And he really spent a lot of time in each room making it very themed. And there's, like, velvet curtains and, like... You gotta have the mood. You gotta set here. the mood for the sun. <laughs> Candlelight. Red velvet curtains. <laughs> a nice big bed. A tray of oysters. <laughs> All laid out. <laughs> Strawberries and whipped cream. <laughs> he knew how to set the mood. He did. John Humphreys. Was he like four foot tall too? He wasn't very tall. He's a little, he's he a little was, old man. He's a little old man. They, they would fling him around really easy. <laughs> hunters episode on it i just have to i wish i did i wish i had time to do it before i did this so i could really have made fun of it oh because i think that would because you know ghost hunters are kind of great adventurers i mean ghost adventures was it adventures yeah well i i've been watching rewatching uh supernatural <laughs> i just watched the ghost facers episodes ghost ghost facers <laughs> yeah they're all like that that's so great yeah i am gonna have to watch that and i'll give you an update on what their experiences were to see if he, one of them got felt up by the hands of ghosts. The hands of ghosts. Get yeah. groped at the Rams Inn. Yeah. Or rammed. <laughs> yeah, groped, rammed. We have some, something for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> wanna wanna be in the room where the dead body's being dragged across the floor? Wanna spend some time with some remains from a ritualistic killing? <laughs> How about getting groped in the bar? <laughs> Seven foot tall. Seven foot tall. <laughs> man. Shadow. Or spend the we'll night save in... the peace to resistance. Let's <laughs> spend the night in the bishop's room with our our in-house succubus and incubus. They're horny. Fresh oysters <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> That's so awful. So you want to make sure you're following us on Instagram and on Facebook because they'll have pictures. If you still want to, actually. <laughs> John Humphreys, I will make sure to put his picture in there so you can see John Humphrey. I will put the bed. <laughs> his tapped. infamous bed, he tapped. It got tapped. He got tapped. <laughs> what? <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, make sure you follow us on there because you're not going to oh, want to miss those pictures and then the episodes, you can share them from there on your socials to your friends. It's late, too. so uh, we're well, a, little, we're a, little... a lot of this is we're just punchy because it's like... 7.30 I know. Night. It's 7.30 at night. Yeah. What if they want to share something with us? I have been up since 5, though. Me 5 too. 5.30. Me too. Yeah. If they oh. want to share something with us, what are they oh. going to do? Margaret. <laughs> 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 to get my, my focus on her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you can send us an email at thecousinsweird at gmail.com. Or you could reach out to us and send us a direct message through Facebook or Instagram. We'd love to hear um, your thoughts <laughs> on Incubus <laughs> on this, and Succubus. On this episode, particularly. <laughs> If you have any suggestions for future episodes, especially if they don't involve succubus. <laughs> or if they do, who knows? I mean, whatever floats uh, Reach your out. Boat. Let us know what you think. Let us uh, tell us your stories. Maybe you could be on a future episode of yeah. That's Weird. That would be so much fun. If you want to support our podcast, you want to make sure you're using your mouth. Wait, no. <laughs> You want to, I like to say word of mouth. <laughs> you want to be using your mouth. I'm like, oh. <laughs> the sucky okay. business possessed me. <laughs> okay. If you want to help our podcast, word of mouth is the best way. We want to, uh, you know, get out there to all the weird people and maybe they want to learn about <laughs> John Humphreys getting raped by a sucky business. <laughs> I don't know. But you should, yeah, word of mouth is the best way. Share us on your socials. Tell your friends all about us. Rate, rate us. Rate us. You want to make sure you're rating us on your platform of choice because that pushes us out into the algorithm and gets us out into other people's airways. Yes. Yeah. And then the other way to do it is through patreon.com backslash the cousins weird. It's for a dollar a month. You're a freaky friend and you get bonus content and a free sticker. And then for two, no, five dollars a month, you're a terrible trender and you get bonus episodes or bonus content, a free sticker ad-free episodes, and a quarterly Skype chat with us. Yay, us. Yay, us. <laughs> Lucky you. Ooh, yay, you. Yay, you. <coughs> yay, us. Get to see you. You want to do that, and it's fun. <laughs> it's time for us to stop. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. Stay freaky. Bye. Bye. Bye.